Hey everybody, what's going on? Just back with another video. So I just want to react to uh, something that The Global actually put out. It says, Pierre Polyev urges Singh to force fall election by ending NDP deal with Liberals. So let's ha have a look at this video. But before we do, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really, really helps grow my channel. And for all of you who already do both of those things, I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well. That way, every time I do make a new video, you get notified about it right away. So let's uh, have a look at this video and then we'll talk about it after, like usual. When you go into the grocery store and you're buying your groceries, you're spending more than ever before and you're leaving with less than ever before. Again, that is after two years of Jagmeet Singh joining the Liberal government. So what's clear is that Singh did not join to bring down grocery prices or housing costs, both of which have skyrocketed since he joined this coalition. He joined with, to keep Trudeau in power so that he could get his pension. Jagmeet Singh is trying to delay the election until after February of next year so that he can qualify for a $2.2 million taxpayer-funded pension. That's why Canadians are calling him Sell Out Singh. My message to Sell Out Singh is this. Put the people ahead of of your pension. Break the costly coalition with Trudeau to trigger a carbon tax election where Canadians can choose between the costly coalition of the NDP Liberals that tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who will axe the tax build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. If you're a billionaire, like the people Trudeau vacations with, then you don't have to worry about inflation because your assets are inflation-proof or even inflation-positive. You get richer. It's a transfer of wealth from the have-nots to the have-yachts. And you know what? It's ironic. It's all done with Jagmeet Singh's support. He can huff and puff all he wants, but he supported the inflationary policies that destroyed the wages of working class people. And he support what he supports what Justin Trudeau did on the rail strike. Do you, do you know, know how we know, do you know how we know that? Do you know how we know that? No, do you know how we know that J that Jagmeet supports it? Because he's still in a coalition with him. And if Jagmeet didn't support it, he would respond to my letter this afternoon and say he's pulling out of the costly coalition. And he's going to vote to bring down Trudeau and cause a carbon tax election. That's what I'm calling for him to do today. Jagmeet Singh, stop selling out the workers. Stop being sellout Singh. Put the people ahead of your pension. Vote for a carbon tax election. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting, right? And now we've been talking about this, especially on this channel, for uh, quite some time now where... You know, as Pierre Polyev said, you know, his pe Jagmeet Singh's pension is available to him as of February of 2025. So we won't be seeing some sort of a pullout from then. As Pierre Polyev said, as we all know, Jagmeet Singh is not for Canada. He's not Canada first. He's pension first. Right? It's money over people, just like pretty much every politician. Pierre Polyev will have a chance to uh, you know, undo that, although I'm not very confident he will. But We'll have to see there, right? I mean, you can't criticize Pierre Polyev for something he hasn't done yet. Where Jagmeet Singh is doing this right now. He's propping up Trudeau for his own pension. He does not care about workers. He does not care about the average Canadian. He's just like Trudeau, and he, he loves seeing Canada being destroyed. Now, he's not come out and said that, of course, but his actions speak louder than his non-words basically right like he's he's coming out and saying like he criticizes trudeau a lot but then every time he does it's like okay then pull out of the coalition and he doesn't so what you know what, what do you what, what else can you think about that other than this guy's just in it for himself and that's the opposite of what the ndp is supposed to be right like they're supposed to be like what jack layton wanted and that's when the ndp was you know more popular but then unfortunately he passed away and the party hasn't been doing that well ever since especially in the last few years with jagmeet singh signing up this coalition that a lot of ndp supporters don't even want so uh not a very good look for him at all but again once he gets his pension 
and you see the the interest rates go up and the carbon tax increases, I do think by next April or May he will call uh, he will for, uh, have a vote of non-confidence. I do think we will see an election a little bit earlier than what's scheduled because right now it's not scheduled until October of 2025. I do see one coming next spring, maybe early summer, which again, it's still too far for a lot of us. And I agree with that. I wish we could have it tomorrow, but unfortunately we are going to have to wait at least a, a little bit here. So um, now another thing that Pierre Pauli had mentioned was that, you know, billionaires, when they, when inflation skyrockets, their wealth also skyrockets because they have a lot of assets. So a house that they had that maybe they bought for, you know, a million dollars 10 years ago is now worth, you know, 2.5 to 3 million. However, when the prices come back down, they're still going to have a house that's around a million dollars. Not to mention they got all kinds of other assets. They're going to have probably a little bit of precious metal. They're going to have a little bit of everything. So that's why Pierre Polyev is saying that billionaires are basically inflation proof because even though their wealth might be inflated right now, when it comes back down, they're going to be okay. The average person, though, if you bought a house for two hundred thousand dollars, say fifteen years ago, it skyrocketed up to you know seven hundred, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That inflates your net worth, but when it comes crashing down, your net worth is taking a huge hit. Or if you're a billionaire, it's like yeah, you're going to take a hit, but you're still going to be worth billion, probably over a billion dollars still, right? If you're worth three billion now, you're still going to be worth a billion or more, even if there's a huge crash where the average people will lose everything. And we saw this happen in 2008, 2009, right? Now, I'm not saying the exact same thing is going to happen again, but it does seem like we have a housing bubble. And bubbles always burst. Doesn't hurt. And that's the thing, right? Like a lot of people will say that the very rich people and the very poor people actually have a lot in common. And one of those things that they do have in common is that if the economy crashes, they're still okay. And poor people are still poor. So nothing really changed. Right. So it's like that's what that's one thing that they have in common where the average person, the working class, every time something really bad happens with the economy, it's those people who suffer the most. Average working Canadians always suffer the most. The billionaires don't because nothing changes and it doesn't change for poor people either. They're already poor before they're poor now. Right. I'm not advocating it's good to be poor. I'm just saying that's one area that where they do have uh, you know things in common. So. You know, it's uh, it, it's really kind of interesting to see what's going to happen in 2025. And I also want you guys to let me know what you think in the comment section. What do you think about the housing bubble? Do you think that's going to burst? What do you think about, you know, like, um, you know, the carbon tax going up? And what do you think about Jagmeet Singh staying in this for his pension instead of being Canada first? I always really enjoy uh, hearing what you guys have to say. Please, so please let me know in the in the comment section what you guys think. If you have a suggestion, any questions, please uh, you know, feel free. It doesn't just have to be about this topic or this video. Um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. So please don't, again, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Really, really helps grow this channel. And uh, I'll be back shortly with a, with a new video. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care, and I'll be back later.